I built a tiny PlayStation 5 with an external disk drive. Welcome to NFC. Sony has released the latest revision of the PlayStation 5. The new slimmer models are up to 30% slimmer and have the same ridiculous design that we've all learned to love. The digital version can be upgraded with a disk drive that'll be sold separately. When I first heard rumors about the detachable disk drive earlier this year, I hoped that Sony would make the disk drive external and design the case to be, well, smaller. I'm disappointed that Sony didn't live up to my expectations, so I decided to do it myself. This tiny PS5 is only 3 liters in volume. That's more than a 60% reduction in size. It features a detachable vertical stand with built-in controller charging dock and an external disk drive. I reused a few of the stock parts to retain some of the features like the status LEDs. More than 20 custom parts were made using my CNC, 3D printers like the X1 Carbon, and services provided by Send Cut Send. The 1200 series motherboard is small enough to fit inside the Skyreach 4 tiny PC case. 
The 6 nanometer SOC die is smaller and more efficient than previous PS5 models. This is what allowed Sony to shrink the heatsink, and it is comparable in size to the Black Ridge CPU cooler. The Black Ridge is about 60 grams heavier, and both heatsinks have six copper heat pipes. The biggest complaint that I have about the design of the PS5 is the fan. It's huge, and it's the reason that the PS5 won't get smaller. Ever wonder why it's so big? Sony prioritizes fan noise over system thermals. The larger the fan, the quieter it is at lower speeds while still providing the airflow needed. The PS5 fan is restricted to about 30% of its full potential, and the speed is determined by the system wattage. One speed for idle, and one speed for load. Since I'm using a knock to 120mm fan, I have to use a separate fan speed controller. The stock PS5 fan is large enough to provide the airflow needed while keeping noise at a minimum when operating at less than 30%, but the knock to 120mm fan cannot. The PS5 sandwiches the motherboard between two thin aluminum and stainless steel plates. I improved it by making the plates thicker and with more surface area. The black ridge is built directly into the heatsink plates. I also made a custom fan shroud to separate airflow between the intake and exhaust. The black ridge cooler mounts directly to the SOC die using liquid metal, just like the stock PS5 heatsink. Sony's application of liquid metal is sloppy and excessive, and is a perfect example of how not to apply liquid metal. It actually reduces the performance of the material when too much is used. I replaced the power supply with the smaller HD Plex 250 watt GAN power supply, and I removed the slotted pin style power connector on the motherboard with cables that plug into the HD Plex. I finished it with a GX16 power connector and a custom sleeve cable. The 3D bezel was machined with light diffusing acrylic and carbon fiber. It contains the power and eject button PCB, the LED PCB, and has cutouts for the front panel USB ports. I used this 2230M.2 SSD from Team Group. There isn't enough space for a standard 2280M.2 SSD without using a riser cable. Intended for small devices, this tiny M.2 SSD fits perfectly. I 3D printed a bracket using brass threaded inserts with room for up to a 2242M.2 SSD. The vertical stand is made from three parts. The sky cradle was machined from acrylic, the controller charging dock was 3D printed, and the support plate was cut from thick aluminum. I really love how it turned out and it even charges the controllers when the system is off since it's wired to the 5 volt standby on the HD Plex. The vertical stand can be quickly attached or removed from the case when needed with these magnetic 2 pin pogo connectors. I sacrificed a Sony PS5 charging dock for the components, particularly the spring loaded charging connectors. It took a lot of prototypes, but thankfully I was able to make them quickly and easily with the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. You might think that making the disk drive external is as easy as extending the data and power cables, but it's a little more complicated. There are two parts to the stock PS5 disk drive. The disk drive motherboard and the disk drive assembly. The disk drive motherboard is paired to the PS5 motherboard. It cannot be swapped between different systems. You can replace a disk drive assembly if any parts break and the disk drive motherboard is still functional. But if the disk drive motherboard fails, your only option is to send the entire system back to Sony for repair. The PS5 will power on and play digital games without the disk drive attached, but you won't be able to install system software updates or play games that you want on disk without it. In order for the external disk drive to work, it can only be plugged in or unplugged when the system is off. Sony must have known that someone would try this, because extending the data cable wouldn't work if the resistance was more than 0.5 ohms. I originally wanted to use a single DB25 cable for the data and power. I even made a few custom cables, but they didn't work since the resistance was too high. I had to use an FFC breakout board with FPC extension cables and a separate power cable. Despite these limitations, the external disk drive is a great feature. Personally, I love having a smaller console with the option of using the disk drive when I need it. The tiny PS5 is more portable and can be carried in most backpacks. It fits into more entertainment cabinet setups and blends into my personal style more than the looming binder profile of the stock PS5. I wanted to compare the thermal performance of the two systems as fairly as possible, so I embedded temperature probes into the heat sinks themselves directly above the SOC. The PS5 does not have a temperature monitoring feature. I did my best to place the probes in a similar location relative to the SOC on the heat sink cold plate. Keep in mind that I had to reapply the liquid metal to the stock PS5 after embedding the probes, and the reapplication most likely improved the results since it was done correctly this time. I used the embedded probe for the fan speed controller on the tiny PS5. Both systems remain under 60 degrees while gaming, and less than 35 degrees when idle. 
The tiny PS5 fan runs at 100% during gaming, but the warm hum of the Noctua fan is essentially inaudible over the speakers and is silent when idle. The best part about the fan speed controller is that it doesn't turn off the fan until the temperature drops below 30 degrees for more than 5 minutes, even after the system is turned off. I would love to see this feature built into PC motherboards. What do you think about the tiny PS5? Do you think Sony should have made the new slim PS5 slimmer? Would you like to have an external disk drive on future consoles? Let us know in the comments below. A huge thank you to my wife, Sarah, for all her help and patience during this project. To my friend, Sam, for letting me experiment on his PS5, and to Josh for his support. I hope you'll join us on our Discord channel. You can find the invite link below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Good. Oh, I gotta wear my. Ah, <laughs> uh, I gotta wear my, <laughs> my special edition NFC swag hat. I don't know, Josh, who wears it better. <laughs> oh, build a tiny PS Five.